Hey, welcome back. This is episode six. We're going to dive into part three of our how to debug an AWS Lambda functions uh, locally. Uh, we're going to go uh, look at how to integrate API gateway in this episode. It's going to try to get in the last episode as well, but uh, it was just getting a little bit too long. So shifted it over to part three. So bear with me and we're going to get uh, the API gateway linked into a Lambda function. So that way you can debug that one locally as well. Um, as a bit of a recap, if you're just joining us for the first time, uh, part one of this was a direct invoke uh, for a Lambda function. So we pointed it right to the code. Now, what it also did was load a Docker container, loaded the uh, Lambda execution environment, and then executed the code with inside that Docker container. Um, part two, instead of pointing it to the code itself, we were pointing it to a CloudFormation template um, that has the SAM serverless extensions added to it as well. And then that way, uh, instead of going to the code, it used the template as far as using for the configuration. That's going to come into play in this particular episode now in part three, and in later episodes when we look at more complex um, projects for Lambda, using things like Lambda layers um, and other elements that would normally not be able to be packaged into a, a debugging environment when you're just pointing at a particular source code file. So last episode was kind of like the, uh, the baby steps getting into this section um, and API gateway. Um, we're going to use uh, application composer again. So if you don't have any experience with um, CloudFormation and the SAM serverless extensions on it, that's okay. We're going to use the little drag and drop kind of canvas and create our CloudFormation templates for us. And again, it is a free tool that you can use inside of AWS. Uh, you aren't provisioning any resources when you're using this tool, so there's no cost or charge to use it, but you do need to have an AWS account in order to log in and use the tool. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at um, our project again real quick. Um, here's our project from last time where we left off as we did create a um, CloudFormation template that has our serverless extensions on it for the transformation for SAM. And with that, we had that wired up so that way we can run an execution point um, for a debugger. And if we run that right now, just to make sure it still works, we have our login, we're going to invoke the template. And when we run this, hopefully I have my breakpoint set. Uh, again, right now, if you're not familiar with this, it is launching Docker, it's launching the Lambda execution environment. And once that's warmed up and loaded, it will push this function into it. Okay, great. So everything ran fine. It is passing the payload in uh, just as we had set it up. It's a very basic payload JSON file that goes into the event. And then we can inspect that and see what's going on. We can log in. You know, everything was great. Um, I logged in fine. Same code executed as last time. Now, what I wanted you to get from that is that payload was very simple. So when we get to the API gateway, and we execute API Gateway first, it's going to take that payload, it's going to package it up, and it's going to push that into the event context. So we're going to see how that works. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go into Application Composer. And I'm already logged in. Here is Application Composer. Uh, we can search for it up here if it doesn't show up and you recently visited. So Application Composer. You're going to get to the standard uh, launch screen where you can open up a demo project. You can create a project. We're going to go ahead and create a project, but technically we're going to connect to an existing project. So we're going to go menu and we're going to say open a project folder. We're going to select a folder. Uh, you might have to navigate to a, your folder. Um, I'm already navigated to mine and I'm just going to say select. It's going to again ask permissions to go ahead and, uh, you know, look at the file system finds it, finds the template that's already out there. If I had more than one YAML file, let's say, which one do you want to connect to? I'm going to go ahead and say create, even though I'm saying create, I'm really just uh, connecting to the project. Um, now it's going to say, okay, it's okay to edit these files, say sure. And here we go. So this is our Lambda uh, function that we created last episode. That's also the one listed right in here that I just connected to in my local uh, file system. And so now if I drag and drop an API gateway on here, we're going to see that it created uh, the basics of the API gateway. If I go look at my template, we're going to see it's right here. Here's the logical name that it created. Uh, and some pretty basic information, nothing really um, too advanced right now. 
Might want to change my uh, logical ID to something like Avengers API. Whatever you want to call it. It's just the logical ID that's used with inside of CloudFormation to refer to it. So I've got Avengers API, uh, and that's it. Right now, it doesn't. It's got one default method of a get that doesn't do anything. And as we can see, oops. If I come back over here and I save, we're going to see that it's updated here as well. Now, right now. We have an API gateway, we have a Lambda function, and what we need to do is integrate the two. So I have an API gateway here with the details. I'm gonna come over, I'm gonna say, let's let's add, uh, I don't really have to add a route, I could just edit this current route because it's not doing anything. But if I had more routes, I could add more routes and add more API uh, or Lambda functions uh, and connect those. So typically a login is a post. So we're going to do login and it's a post mainly because, you know, you want to pass that information up in the payload and not in any sort of um, query string path. So there's my route. Um, I'm going to go ahead and save it. Now that's all that I needed to do there. So it's pretty basic here. There's no integration at this point with the Lambda function. In order to do the Lambda function integration, all I need to do is grab this endpoint for this guy and it even highlights to where I can connect it to. So you notice I can't drop it on this end. This end is for anything that's outgoing, like if it didn't work successfully or something happened, you can send off an SNS topic, you can send something to a um, to a dead letter queue, that sort of thing. But now it tells me, oh, you can drag and drop it here. So now I've made that connection. API Gateway knows about my login function. If I go back and look at the cloud formation template, something interesting's happened. It added events here that says, okay, um, this is an event that can happen that's allowed to happen on this particular uh, function. And I'm allowing this, this login path. It's a post uh, and it's connected to this Avengers API, which is the logical ID for this. In addition, um, this is where an integration comes in that says, okay, for any pass that we have log in, a post, I am going to pass that information into Lambda. So the reason it's in two places is that one is, this is saying what the integration is. When this happens, I am going to attempt to execute this login function. This up here is Lambda's way of saying, I'm going to allow you to connect to me um, when that API event happens. And this is a really nice plain way of looking at it. When you look at the security and everything under the hood later on, after you would actually deploy this, you could see that it's a little more complicated of, um, of, of a structure than what this is. This makes it look really nice and easy, which is the point of SAM. It's one of the things that kind of hides some of the complexities of what you would otherwise have to implement through some security policies and everything. This does it for you, which is really cool behind the scenes. Okay, so now we have the login function. We have our Avengers API gateway that has an integration into our Lambda function. And the last thing that we need to do to wire it up is simply create that additional configuration. So again, earlier we have our direct invoke from our code. We have our direct invoke for our template. Now we wanna add one for an API. And so we have our direct invoke here. So I'm going to just say this is going to be my login just so I've got something friendly to reference to it up here. So when I come over here and now I've got my login API gateway versus my login uh, template invoke. I need to have the template location, which is the same as this one down here. And the logical ID is actually still going to be that function as well, because these things are kind of chained together. If I were to put something else in here, it'd actually give me an error. So even it says the resource name of a Lambda function or a serverless function. So it's telling me right now that I do need to have the logical ID of a Lambda versus the API gateway itself. And that's because again, we're chaining that when this executes, it's gonna know, oh, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to execute this um, login function, but because it's an API invoke, it knows to go through these events and do this. So let's configure that now. So again, location is gonna be the same as this. It's that template. So I can just copy this, make it easy. Copy and paste this here. The next thing I need to do is 
the path, the path is the route. So login is the route that we configured for the API. And the method is a post. That's what we configured there. Uh, I don't know why it's not smart enough to pick that up if we're pointing it to this anyways, and we have that. Um, so that's just something that we have to do. And then we can use the same package, the same payload. And I wanna show you that, yeah, we're gonna use the exact same payload, which is this. So this is all that I was sending into the Lambda function earlier. And if you remember the event uh, context, the payload on that, that's all that it had in there, just this information. Watch what happens when we now take this and we launch this through the API gateway. And I believe I have everything set up. Targets API, template login, good there at the path, post. So this is it. It's pretty simple. So if you if you did the last um, uh, episode and you followed along, this should look you know pretty much almost identical with the exception of we're passing it to the API and we have a little bit of information in here about the path and the HTTP method. So if you did the last one, this should be pretty easy. If not, feel free to kind of digest this a little bit. Now we're going to go and go ahead and execute that. So again, remember how simple that payload was before, and we're still passing in the same payload. And make sure I still have my breakpoint set, which I do. Go back, and we're going to debug this. And again, the same sort of thing is going to happen now. It's going to you know, fire up the Docker container. It's going to fire up an API gateway implementation. It's going to fire up uh, the Lambda event handler. And all that just happened. So it's kind of a cold start. It takes a little while for all this to happen. But now look at the event structure. The event structure now has all the stuff that API gateway passes into it, query string parameters, path parameters, all that sort of fun information, along with a body here as well that is our payload. So we have to go another level in before everything was at just the event root payload. Now with inside of the event, we have to get um, into the body to then get the username and password. So my login function actually does that. I have this get value from event, which basically it'll look to say, hey, is there a body inside of the payload? And there happens to be one. So we're gonna go ahead and grab that first. And then we're also gonna make sure to see if it's a type of string, which the payload is coming in typically as a type of string. And just in case somebody put some single quotes in there that got messed things up, we're gonna do double quotes. Um, and then we're going to load that payload. And then we are going to go ahead and grab from that payload, we're going to get the key value. And if it's not there, we're gonna say none. This was just my implementation, by the way, for these single quotes, um, because I was playing around with something else and I had some problems with some single quotes. Um, if that has a problem with yours, then you know, feel free to take that out because that, that could cause some disruptions under some you know, specific use cases. Anyway, so we're gonna get the value. And so it did the login, everything. It got back the username, it got back the password and the passphrase, they were all equal. Again, these are just some hard-coded values for testing. Again, you'd probably wanna to go to like a database or an IDP of some sort later on, but it is gonna return back success and it's gonna return back the username in a, in a tuple. And it's gonna grab that information, those variables. Status code is gonna be 200 unless it was not a success. And it's gonna package all that response and basically just say, you know, hello, um, Tony Stark from Lambda. Login was true, login was successful. And that's all there is to it. Um, once you get those basics down, once you realize that you can just create a SAM template and then you can wire that up through your configuration settings for your uh, launch configurations, then you can just simply set your breakpoints, start running, executing and debugging your API gateways your functions to make sure that they work as expected. It's much easier to do this than putting up a bunch of print statements and log statements, redeploying your code, re-executing a test, and then trying it all out. So I highly recommend you give this a shot, see if it works for you, drop any comments or questions in the chat. I'd be happy to respond or go in for a deeper dive on this. I'm gonna continue this debugging series um, was just going to be kind of a three-parter, but it's kind of morphed into more than that. Again, I still have to do the uh, deep dives for a Lambda 
function that uses packages. So I think that'll be my next part in this debugging series. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please like and subscribe. Let me know if this is working for you. Let me know if there's anything you're, you want to see that I'm not showing, and I'm happy to add some additional videos. So thanks for attending, and I'll see you next time.